Hey guys, what's going on? Jeff here, and today I'm going to be bringing you a video talking about cryptocurrency adoption. And more specifically, I'm going to be talking about the challenges that those adopters of crypto face as they're first getting into the space. And this isn't really just a, you know, cry me a river, play me a sad song on the fiddle type deal. It's actually pretty important that we seek out and systematically eliminate these things that make it more difficult for people to get into cryptocurrency because we want mass adoption. I think one thing that most people in cryptocurrency can agree on is that for us to achieve anywhere near the things that we want out of crypto, be it, well, be it making money, be it uh, social and political changes based on distributed ledger and blockchain technology and decentralized applications permeating the web, anything that you want in cryptocurrency, a lot of it is predicated on the idea that cryptocurrency will be mass adopted in the future. And if we're going to have mass adoption, then we're going to need to have a very, very, very large and diverse number of people, diverse intellectually number of people, getting into the space and it's very difficult for a lot of them to get into the space right now and today I'm going to be talking about a lot of those challenges that they face so that we can start really thinking about a lot of these things that make it more difficult for people to get in the, into the space so that we can start eliminating them as I said earlier. Let's cover the fo the, the first. Let's cover the first and most glaring one of these and we're looking at it right now in front of us. One of the most challenging things or one of the most uh, discouraging things for a lot of investors in cryptocurrency right now is simply the market. Now a lot of people think that you can just throw 10 bucks in Bitcoin and walk out with a Lamborghini smelling like a rose in 10 days, but that's not the way it works. I know I use that example a lot, but it's true if we come out here to the chart which not having a very good day. I'll probably talk about that tomorrow. But if you invested back here and you held for eight months, then yeah, you you made like 15 times profit. But if you invested here at the top and and now you're down here, you're down like 60% or a little bit more actually. Go away. But a lot of people think that cryptocurrency is just a way to make a lot of money, and that's not the and that's not the case. A lot of early adopters seem to think that, and uh, that, well, they are sorely mistaken, and a lot of them come to realize that. But one of the things that is really discouraging. For a lot of early investors right now is simply the market because I know a lot of people in my comment section in the discord server etc a lot of the people that air quotes scare quotes survived started investing up here and they've been just kind of crashing all the way down and following the market as it went down and those are the ones with iron fists and those are probably the ones that will be here for a while so shout out to you if you invested up here and you're still holding on you're the you're the true believer in the technology but the market itself is one of the things that can really scare people away from cryptocurrency and the volatility itself is one of the things that's really going to help hinder adoption rather than grow adoption at least in the current market when the market is booming like this again it's going to be vice versa of course which is part of the reason that we had this massive little uh, run up here and subsequently a pretty massive pullback so the market itself is one of the big contributing factors to a lot of fear of people that are first getting into crypto because they fear losing all their money. They want to make a lot of money, but they fear losing all their money. And a lot of people they, a lot of people paint cryptocurrency as a short-term investment when it's actually a long-term investment. I've talked about this extensively on the channel, but you shouldn't treat crypt crypto as a short-term investment in my humble opinion. You should treat it as a long-term investment and you and you it will pay you dividends. Not literally, but it will pay you very well if you treat it as a long-term investment. But a lot of people come into crypto think it's a short-term investment, and then they get burned, and then they never come back. And those are the kind of people that we don't want. Well, not the kind of people we don't want. We want them. We just don't want them to have that happen to them because then they won't come back. We don't want that to happen. Anyway, so that's one. That's uh, the number one thing that I wanted to talk about. I also want to go here over here to Binance and show you another thing. Now... One of, the, one of the big problems in cryptocurrency, and I harp on this a lot when I talk about the uh, Ethos, which is a project I'm a very big fan of that is uh, leaving pre-release this Saturday. You might want to go to their website and sign up for their pre-release because you'll be getting some airdrop stuff. Shout out for them. You might want to do that. Free tokens. Why not? But that's re this is a real big reason why I like Ethos, and what I'm talking about here is user interface. Now, I don't have much of a background in um, programming and everything. I have a very slight background in programming. And user and user experience development, uh, UX. But one of the most important things to get someone to use your product is to have a good user interface. Now, Binance does a pretty good job of this for people that are more more uh, financially inclined, people that have either previously been in uh, financial markets like the stock market, or people that have previously used other exchanges like Bitrix. But a lot of people that are just getting into cryptocurrency, for example, have absolutely no idea what is going on here. And I honestly can't blame them. This is kind of a, this is kind of overwhelming. And this is listed as the basic version here on Binance. If you want to sign up for Binance, there's a link in the description. I think a few of you have signed up under that link, so shout out to you guys. But if we come here to the advanced version, a lot of it's the exact same information laid out differently, but Binance is just one example of a lot of websites that have pretty bad user interface. And shout out to Binance. I'm not criticizing Binance. What they're trying to display here, you can't really display it in a better way. I'm just saying that there's some that 
there's so much information that it is actually very hard to create a intuitive UX. It, it it is a very difficult task, and I'm not I'm not bashing Binance or anything. I think they do a very good job of it. But I'm just simply stating the people that are getting into cryptocurrency for the first time may find a very ha may have a very hard time figuring out what anything on my screen right here is, let alone the the order book here and how to uh, set buys and sells. They probably don't know how to use stop limits. They just don't understand a lot of things. And that kind of leads me into, well, actually, that will lead me into my next topic in just a second. I want to shout out a couple of people, a couple of, um, uh, a couple of products that do actually do this very well. Coinbase and, and uh, Exodus Wallet both have very good user interfaces. They're very simple. They're very clean. Now, they kind of lack some functionality because you can't set your own fees on Coinbase. And you can't set them on Exodus either, but they do, uh, they do have, they do have very clean and very intuitive user interfaces, just about as intuitive as you can get. But anyway, what I was talking about here on Binance kind of leads me into the other thing, where you just have information overload here on this screen, and that kind of leads me into the last thing I want to talk about here that we need to also think about when we're trying to get more people to adopt Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, is that there is so much information. There is just an absolute my there, there's so much information in cryptocurrency i don't even i can't even think of a metaphor for that there is absolutely so much information in cryptocurrency there's so much to learn there's so much news to keep up with there's so many acronyms to figure out what they mean you got the sec you got the cftc you got you got every single ticker symbol for every single cryptocurrency that people like to remember there is so much information and i'm obviously glossing over it there's an exorbitant amount of information in cryptocurrency a lot of people that are first getting into cryptocurrency i find a hard time when i'm explaining people to cryptocurrency i find a hard time explaining them how a blockchain works let alone how lightning network works i have a very hard time explaining to them that i i have a very hard time explaining to them a lot of things the blockchain itself is one of the most is one of the hardest things to explain to them and i say that because that's one of the only things i'm able to explain to them before the conversation ends because they're already confused there is a lot of technology there's not there's a lot of terminology in cryptocurrency and bitcoin for people to understand if they want to be an avid investor and an actual uh, uh, an actual learned citizen of cryptocurrency if you will there's a lot to learn there's a lot a lot to learn i can't really stress that enough but i'm going to stop because i think you guys understand what i'm talking about there's so much research to do a lot of people that are experts on cryptocurrency which i am not by the way a lot of you guys seem to think that i'm like some guru and i'm a genius in cryptocurrency i'm not i'm still a student I, I i think i give that impression because i only talk about things that i know a lot about on the channel but i'm absolutely not a genius or anything or an expert don't don't think that please and also don't take this as financial advice. That's another thing. But there are so many coins here. A lot of YouTubers, they, they seem to know everything about... Uh, they seem to know everything about every single coin. And a lot of them, that's just from doing hours and hours and hours of research every day. But that's another thing where people are like... You go on YouTube. You go on YouTube. Let's go on YouTube real quick. And you type in cryptocurrency. And I bet there's going to be a bunch of clickbait here. And uh, probably some of them will be my videos. I'm not going to I'm not gonna shy away from that. <laughs> but... um. <laughs> There's so much thrown at people when they're first getting into cryptocurrency. That's just information overload. You have, oh, well, here's the top five coins in cryptocurrency. You should buy, I don't know, let's go here on CoinMarketCap. You should buy Icon. You should buy Tether. -la 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 -la. You should buy ETH Classic, VeChain, uh, Bytecoin, SiaCoin. Those are my five coins. That's a that's a fake list, by the way. I'm not saying you should. But a lot of people are like, oh, we should buy this project. You should buy this pro project. You should buy this project. And before you know it, They've been recommended to buy 50 different projects, and they don't even know where to start researching. I, I fully understand how that feels, and I'm sure a lot of you do also, because there are so many cryptocurrencies here, and 90% of them are absolute garbage, and 99% of them aren't going to last the next five years. So weeding out those those projects that are complete trash is very difficult even for an experienced investor and trader and citizen of crypto as i said earlier it's difficult for just about anyone let alone a newer investor there's so much information in cryptocurrency to to take in before you can really be a, a a very good trader it's it's a complete world of its own it's a there's so much information i think i've said that like 10 times so i'm going to stop but my point is is that in cryptocurrency we want cryptocurrencies to become mass adopted we want them to be globally adopted a lot of these projects that you see here in the top top 10 are predicated on mass adoption existing or their projects just don't even really work the way that they're supposed to like ethereum eos and neo all three of those projects are predicated or well not predicated they're they're built with the idea of building decentralized applications and they want to get insane number of transactions per second like eos wants to do like a million transactions per second e uh, ethereum is having a lot of things like plasma sharding and a uh, Raiden network they're having a lot of implementations on the ethereum protocol to actually increase the uh, transactions per second in ethereum so that decentralized applications can run through it 
But the thing is, those just, those, that uh, transaction per second number doesn't really matter if you don't have people using them. So the reason a lot of investment is going into a lot of these projects is with the idea that a lot of people will be investing in them and a lot of people will be using them. A lot of these projects, not a lot of these projects. Anyway, my point is is that a lot that we want mass adoption in cryptocurrency because mass adoption will bring us one money and two the change that we want to see in the world, so that we can see something like Bitcoin or Litecoin or or not necessarily Ethereum, but like Bitcoin or Litecoin or, or another cryptocurrency be a globally accepted cryptocurrency. We want to see the day where that's possible. That's why so many people were excited for Litepay. We want to see where that's possible, and to get there, we're going to need mass adoption, because if you want to get anything done in in a human civilization, you have to get a lot of people to agree to do it, or it's just not going to happen, at least not not peaceably anyway. But we want mass adoption, and if we want mass adoption, we're going to have to figure out what is stopping people from adopting Bitcoin, and we're going to have to, like I said earlier, systematically eliminate those hurdles for people getting into cryptocurrency. It's very easy for people to get invested in the U.S. dollar. Think about how easy it is to use a physical U.S. dollar. Now think about how hard it is to use Bitcoin. Like, it's not that difficult for us who know what we're doing, but if you don't know what you're doing, it's not exactly intuitive if you think about it. Just think about when you first got into cryptocurrency, and you'll know exactly what I mean. It's not anywhere near as intuitive as the U.S. dollar, for example, or just about any fiat currency. Not saying I'm a, not saying I, uh, I think the U.S. dollar is better than Bitcoin or anything, but we need to get rid of a lot of the things that are hindering the adoption of Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, so that we can actually see us return to all-time high and up to that million dollars that I think we will eventually go to. Like I've said, we have a long way to go. I show this in a lot of videos. Here we are down here, and here's a million dollars. We have a long way to go. But I think we can get there, but one of the most important things we need to do is continue to help people that are getting into cryptocurrency rather than making fun of them as I, as I see some people doing. But anyway, guys, I've been rambling on way too long. I hope I've made my point here. I want to go over the three things that I was talking about in this video. First of all is the price action that kind of discourages people because they look at it as an investment rather than an actual currency. And then they get burned in their investments when we go into a pretty bad bear market here. The next thing is very poor uh, user interface or on the flip side of that, information overload where it's just not possible to make a uh, intuitive user interface in which is the which is the um, which is the bucket that Binance is in and then you, we also have information overload you come here on Twin, coin telegraph and if you didn't know what cryptocurrency was and you weren't into cryptocurrency you would be confused at like every other word in a lot of these titles to be fair so anyway guys that's what I wanted to talk about in today's video I wanted to talk about a lot of the things that make it harder for people to get invested in cryptocurrencies and also I want to throw it back to you and let you tell me in the comments down below what you think we can do to actually strip away some of these challenges for newer investors in cryptocurrencies what do you think we can do to actually fix a lot of these things now the user inter the, the user interface thing is pretty obvious just design a better user interface the market thing is not so obvious because we like the volatility in cryptocurrency, but newer investors don't necessarily because they're, they don't know what they're doing a lot of the times. And then there's also information overload, which I don't really see a way we can fix that. So what do you guys think? Make sure you let me know in the comments down below. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.